Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. In this tutorial, we'll learn what custom properties are in Blender and how to use them. Let's get started. Custom properties allow you to add your own custom values to objects. With these values, you can control objects, materials, or even animations in your scene. In short, custom properties make your scene more dynamic and customizable. Let's see how it works with a simple example. Here, we have a double door model. We'll add a custom property to control the opening of the right door panel. First, let's move the door's origin to the hinge point. Select the right panel and press tab to enter edit mode. Select the vertex at the center of the hinge, press shift S and move the 3D cursor to that point. Switch back to object mode, right click and choose set origin to 3D cursor. Now press R, then Z, and rotate the door. Perfect. Let's make this door open automatically using a custom property. Go to the Object Data Properties tab and open the Custom Properties panel at the bottom. Click New to add a new property, then click the gear icon to open its settings. You can name this property whatever you like. I'll call it Door Open. The type defines what kind of value this property can store. If you set it to float, it can take decimal values like 0.5, 1.25, or 3.7. If we U it to integer, it will only take whole numbers. Let's keep it as float for this example. The default value is the starting value of the property. I'll set it to zero, meaning the door will be completely closed at the start. Minimum and maximum define the lowest and highest possible values for the slider. Let's set the minimum to zero and maximum to one. That means when the slider is at zero, the door is closed, and when it's at one, the door is fully open. Soft limits define the recommended range for users. The min and max still apply, but with soft limits, the slider moves more freely within that range. I'll leave that disabled for now. Step controls how much the value changes each time you move the slider. For example, if the step is 0.1, the value will change like 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and so on. Precision defines how many decimal places are shown. For example, 2 means values like 0.25 or 1.75. Subtype lets you describe what kind of data the property represents, such as an angle, distance, or time. Here, I'll just leave it as plain data. Description is a short note explaining what the property does. This shows up as a tooltip when you hover over it. I'll leave this one empty. Once everything is set, click OK. Now we have a new custom property that can be adjusted between 0 and 1. You can also access it from the item panel on the right. Press N to open the side panel, go to the item tab, and you'll find the door open slider at the bottom. But as you can see, the slider doesn't do anything yet because we haven't linked it with a driver. To make the door open and close, we need to control its rotation on the Z axis. Right click on the Z rotation value and choose Add Driver. In the new window, set the variable type to single property. A single property variable lets a driver read a specific value from another object, like a custom property. That's how we connect objects together. Set the prop type to object and use the eyedropper to pick the right door panel. Now you'll see that the door's Z rotation has a purple value, meaning it's controlled by a driver. Right-click it again and choose Edit Driver. The data path tells Blender which value to read. We'll use the custom property we created earlier, named Door Open. When writing the data path, you must use square brackets and quotation marks, like this. Set the driver type to scripted expression. This allows us to calculate the value using a formula. I want the door to open 180 degrees. At zero, the door will be closed, and at one, it will be fully open. But remember, Blender uses radians, not degrees. So instead of typing 180, we need to multiply the value by pi. Now, when you move the door open slider from zero to one, the door smoothly rotates 180 degrees. That's it. Custom properties aren't limited to rotation or position. 
You can also control other data types, like lights. For example, let's control a point light's color using a custom property. Select the point light and go to the Light Properties tab, the green light bulb icon. Open the Custom Properties panel and name it Light Color. Set the type to integer, the default value to 0, and the range from 0 to 2. Value 0 will be white, 1 will be orange, and 2 will be blue. Click OK. Now right-click on the light's color and choose Add Driver. Because light color uses three channels, red, green, and blue, we'll need to add a separate driver for each channel. For the red channel, set the variable type to single property, the prop type to light, and pick the point light. In the data path, type the property name with brackets and quotes like this. The same setup applies for the green and blue channels. For each color channel, I used a short Python expression to control the RGB output. Based on the light color value, I actually generated the expression with ChatGPT and pasted it into each channel's expression field. Now, when light color equals zero, the light is white. When it's one, it turns orange. And when it's two, it becomes blue. As you can see, Custom properties make your Blender scenes much smarter and more interactive. You can control lights, animations, or any value in your scene from a single slider. It's one of the most powerful ways to connect different systems together and even create your own custom control panels inside Blender. In short, custom properties turn Blender into your very own interactive dashboard. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next tutorial.